Hello everybody, welcome back to Killing Floor 2. My name is Reefy Ron, and today we're going to be talking about what is the best loadout for each of the classes. Uh, I get this question asked pretty often whenever I'm live streaming or just in my video section whenever I make a Killing Floor 2 video. People are either wondering what is a good boss loadout, what is a good class to fight boss with, should I be switching classes, what weapons should I take, what should I upgrade. Uh, in all honesty, in Killing Floor 2, you can kind of go with whatever you want and make it work. If you're a decent enough player, um, or if you have a very good team, then it really doesn't matter, I would say. Uh, you can kind of get away with just about using anything. Maybe not if the whole team's using, like, really weird off-perk weapons or something, and you're playing on, like, 10 rounds Hell on Earth. Maybe not then, but even so, I feel like you would still actually have a pretty good chance. So I'm going to be telling you guys... In my opinion, what is the best loadout generally for the class? Um, and this is to work in pretty much any other team comp and to accommodate most roles that uh, your class fills. You could always have different loadouts and there could be a better loadout depending on what your team has. For example, if you had like a medic, you had a sharpshooter and then you had like three demos and you're playing um, like commando or something. At that point, you have four classes that can kill big things incredibly fast and if they are going with all high damage single target weapons like the RPG, railgun, stuff like that, then going with a regular commando loadout probably actually isn't the best option. Going with something that can clear up small enemies or extend Z time is probably better. So going with something like the stoner and the tommy gun would actually probably be a really good choice uh, to go with in that particular team comp. But that's just one example. There, there's plenty of other examples of different weapons and stuff. So I'm just going to go down class by class and tell you my recommendations. First up, we have Berserker. And what I'd recommend for Berserker is going with the Hemoclobber. And then you can really go with anything else. What I would recommend and what I would say is probably the best overall weapon in combination with this is the Frostfang. Um, Frostfang gives you a pretty good melee weapon, it gives you a status effect being able to freeze enemies, and it's a ranged weapon for Berserker, which is pretty nice, you can still block and parry with it, you deal uh, over double damage if you are freezing enemies and then hitting them with the axe, so that's kind of a nice bonus to it, it holds enough shots, and uh, even if you do run out of ammo, it's okay because you still have it, plus the Hemoclobber. The Hemoclobber is still probably Berserker's best weapon even after it's been nerfed. <laughs> Uh, because it still weighs only four, you can put it with any other weapon. It still gives healing, which is nice. It still does AoE damage with poison, and it still applies poison effects to large Zeds, so when you fight them with the Hemoclobber, you can beat them pretty easily, because half the time they'll be freaking out from the poison. You can also upgrade these weapons, if you would like, in combination, or you could go with another weapon, something like C4 or a Medic Pistol, if you want to be even more of a team player. It also works pretty well with whatever build you want to go with with Berserker. You can go with Tank Build and use this. You can go with a more aggressive damage build and still go with this. Next class is Commando, and for Commando I would recommend having the 401 Medic Assault Rifle combined with the FAL. This is a pretty standard Commando loadout, you're gonna see this one pretty often, but it's still quite strong. The Medic AR is good enough at killing all sorts of small stuff and medium stuff, it's fairly accurate, it does good DPS, it has a big clip size, um, all around it's pretty good, plus you can heal allies with it, which is a big bonus. And then the FAL is pretty much your big Z weapon or medium Z weapon or long range weapon because it does have better sights for shooting at long range. You can shoot it in semi-auto or full auto, although you can run through bolts pretty fast with full auto. Doesn't matter too much since you have the medic AR, you're probably not going to be running out of ammunition too often. Um, and the FAL works good enough against flesh pounds and scrakes. It's less than ideal compared to other weapons, but it works good enough. So um, that's usually what I go with. If you have a bunch of teammates though, you if you have like multiple medics or multiple teammates going with medic uh, weapons, then you don't necessarily need the uh, 401 and you could substitute it with something like the M16. That's also pretty strong. Other than that, pretty straightforward build here for Commando. Um, I, don't, I don't think I really have much else to say about it. Moving out to support, we have the M4 and the AA-12. This is what I'd recommend because it's a good loadout against everything. Although support has a lot of options because of the the extra weight that they have. So this isn't your only option, but this works well against pretty much everything at every range. The AA-12 is accurate enough to be fired at pretty much any range and does high enough damage to body shot small enemies, as well as it can kill medium Zeds very fast, it can kill large Zeds very fast. The M4 does a bit more burst damage than the AA-12 does, so I usually use this at close range, but it works at long range too, especially if you're level 15 and have tight choke. 
both of them work incredibly well then. You could also go with other options in this though too. You could keep the AA-12, go with the Medic Shotgun if you want to be more supportive. You could also go with the Double Barrel if you want more mobility and more burst damage. Uh, you could go with the Doomstick as well with this loadout if you want to go AA-12 and Doomstick if you're max level of course. If not, and you still want to use the Doomstick, you could use that. And then the Double Barrel if you just want to have the most amount of burst damage you can. Or of course combine it with something like the M4. Frost Fang, something along those lines. They all work pretty well, and it's kind of hard to pin down just one loadout I'd recommend for uh, support. That's why I picked the M4 and the AA-12, because it works well against everything. It also works really well on any of the bosses. You could have a more ideal loadout, depending on which boss you're fighting, like having the Double Barrel or the Doomstick against the King Flesh Pound is definitely better, or even against Hans is better. Uh, but against like Patriarch, Matriarch, Abomination, the AA-12, and the M4 will not disappoint you at all. That's why I'd recommend them. And they'll do okay against the other two as well. Moving on from support, we've got Demo. And Demo is another extremely straightforward build. Uh, the RPG and the Kaboom Stick. Not really a whole lot to say here. Um, this loadout's not too expensive either. It's something like 2700 Dosh, I believe. So it's not too expensive. It does really well against pretty much everything. You're going to be using the RPG at range, um, either against crowds or against single large targets. You can one-shot uh, strikes and flesh pounds even on six-man hell on earth with the RPG if you're going with all left-hand perks and you are level 20 to 25. Um, you do have enough damage to do that, uh, although the rocket needs to hit him in the head and it needs to be at a distance where the rocket will explode. Uh, otherwise, you will not kill either one of them with just a single shot. So that's pretty nice. Uh, it also completely destroys like quarter pounds and any sort of medium enemy. If you shoot into the body of like a bloat, a husk, siren, anything like that, it's going to die. So you don't have to worry about that. And you can use it against crowds. Then you're going to use the Kaboom Stick up close and personal because it doesn't have that much range, but it has a lot of stopping power at very close range. The secondary fire also gives you bonus mobility and even more burst damage. And you can fight things like flesh pounds and strikes pretty easily, even if they do get close to you. It's not entirely ideal against strikes because it will take up a decent amount of ammo but you're pretty safe doing it because the uh, kaboom stick has so much stagger chance that it's very unlikely that they'll be able to run up and fight you at least one-on-one -on -one. moving on to firebug the loadout i'd recommend for firebug would be the helios rifle with the thermite bore this is just really strong against everything. The Thermite Board does AoE damage with its fire as well as AoE explosion damage. So it works pretty decently well against Flesh Pounds and Quarter Pounds. Um, and the AoE fire just does well against everything, especially if you combine it with Ground Fire. The Helios Rifle does well against everything. This is a bit more on the expensive side though. This is going to cost you 3500 Dosh in total to get, but it's well worth it. Helios Rifle allows you to fight pretty much anything. You can fight strikes and flesh pounds really easy with it. You can kill small enemies very quickly with it, and you can kill robots incredibly fast with it. It makes it probably the best weapon against the Matriarch just for that uh, reason alone. Aside from that, there's not much else to say. Of course, throw out your Molotovs too. That way you got even more AoE damage and try to space out your uh, Thermite Bore shots a little bit. If you're very familiar with the um, Seal Squeal from Demo, then the Thermite Bore will be a really easy pickup for you, uh, just with a little bit less burst damage, but more damage over time. I forgot a class. Let's go back to Medic. For Medic, the build I'd recommend going with is the Heal Thrower, combined with literally anything else. I picked the Hemo Goblin here because I think it's probably the best overall weapon to pair with it, but I could see arguments for just about every other Medic weapon too, because you can really use whatever other Medic weapon you want with the Heal Thrower. The Heal Thrower is your best healing weapon, uh, or I guess best healing tool, not necessarily a weapon, because as a weapon it kind of sucks. You're not going to be using it against anything large, at least to kill them in any reasonable amount of time. It'll do okay against things like crawlers and clots and stuff like that, but against other large enemies it's going to take forever for you to kill them. Uh, the healing gas also applies all of the buffs that Medic has to your allies, so it's very easy to keep all of your allies at full health. The healing gas will also heal them, kind of unsurprisingly, and you have healing darts with it. So you have two healing weapons and one with the heal thrower. I combined it with the Hemogoblin because the Hemogoblin is a pretty decent weapon now. It has a fast enough reload, it shoots fast enough, and it does enough damage to kill most small and medium zeds quickly. And it also uh, applies the bleeding status effect to any of the large zeds, which slows them down and makes it so they can't hit your allies as hard. So it makes a great supporting weapon, especially on boss wave. And its healing darts are pretty good too. So you're pretty much never going to run out of ammo 
or at least never going to run out of healing darts, healing ability with these weapons. You could also even pair this with a medic pistol on top of that if you don't feel like upgrading either one of them. You can upgrade either one of them once. I would probably recommend the Hemogoblin just because it does scale better than the heal thrower, and the heal thrower you're not really doing any sort of damage with. You're just keeping it there to heal allies. Moving on to Gunslinger, the weapons that I would recommend for Gunslinger honestly kind of vary because Gunslinger can get away with just about using anything similar to support. What I would recommend here, at least for solo, is probably going with the Piranha Pistols and the Deagles. You could go with the 500 Magnums if you don't really want the Deagles. That also works pretty well. Uh, this build works really well against Boss Wave because you do have enough bullets to kill almost all the bosses even on 6 man hell on earth. The Piranha Pistols do a ton of damage per shot. They're probably the best damage per second weapon that Gunslinger has at the moment. At least in terms of consistent damage towards things like bosses. Uh, Deagles do tons of damage per second too. They've always been known for that. But like I said, you could go with the 500s. You could go with the 2011s. The Glock 18s are also probably my favorite to pair with the Piranha Pistols. Because I usually use the Glock 18s to clear up all the small stuff then use the Piranha Pistols to deal heavy damage to the large enemies, and I feel like I have tons of bullets left over with the uh, Glock 18s. Then moving over to Sharpshooter, the loadout I'd recommend for Sharpshooter is going with the Centerfire and the Railgun. Very straightforward loadout here. You can upgrade the Railgun once or upgrade the Centerfire once. I usually pick to upgrade the uh, Railgun just so that I have a little bit more consistent damage to one-shot large enemies like Scrakes and potentially do some pretty high damage to Flesh Pounds. Um, that's pretty much all I use the railgun for is just flesh pounds, quarter pounds, scrakes. Then I use the center fire against everything else. It has high enough base damage just without being upgraded at 165. So about the same as the 500 Magnum, a little bit better than the 500 Magnum. And it gives you long range to kill pretty much everything. Even it unupgraded, this thing still kills scrakes and flesh pounds incredibly fast. For SWAT, we have the new kind of HRG standard, which is going with the HRG Bastion and the HRG Nail Gun. Um, you can then either take a medic pistol if you want to upgrade the nail gun or take a medic SMG if you would not like to upgrade the nail gun. So with this build, the Bastion gives you plenty of damage towards small enemies. It does decent damage against large things and it gives you a shield, which is very important because that's what you're going to use to block against things like Flesh Pounds charging you. You can use this to block, wait for them to uh, not be enraged anymore after they hit you, throw a flashbang at their feet, switch over to your nail gun, and you can burst fire them fairly fast. Um, nail gun scales really well with upgrades. It does a huge amount of DPS with its uh, shotgun fire mode. And even without that, it does consistent DPS at long range with just the regular nails. It's all around really strong. Then you can, like I said, combine it with either the medic pistol or medic SMG. If you're going with the level 25 perk with SWAT that gives you infinite ammo during Zed time, you also have infinite healing syringes from the uh, medic SMG, so you can work pretty well as an off perk medic um, for healing up your team or you could go with the medic pistol and not worry about that use your zed time to actually kill enemies and then lastly we have survivalist and survivalist is really difficult to actually pick just one loadout for because they work so well with so many the loadout that i eventually picked though was the kaboom stick mixed with the arc generator this works really well against pretty much everything, especially on Boss Wave. The Kaboom Stick does really high damage, gives you extra mobility, which is always nice. And the Arc Generator does double damage towards all of the bosses with the Secondary Fire. Um, and Secondary Fire is also incredibly good against anything that's in a hallway or on a long map where they constantly spawn from one direction. Um, you'll get so much value out of that thing that it's crazy. On smaller maps, it's not as good, and I'd probably switch over to the Hemoclobber and the Kaboom Stick because those two in combination just work so well too. But you have a lot of options with um, Survivalist, and I didn't even consider any of the options if you want to go with Weapon Harness and then have 20 weight, or then you have just as many options to pick from as Support, which Support already has tons of options, and you could argue even more with Survivalist because you can literally use whatever you want. So you have tons of options with them, but that would be the one that I'd pick. You could also go with like Kaboom Stick and RPG. That also works really well for them too, just the same way it works for Demo. Um, really anybody else's loadout that I said will work pretty well on Survivalist as a decent loadout, I think. Except for maybe like Firebug, just because you don't get any bonuses from the, uh, the weapons themselves. So that would be all of the best loadouts that I could think of for each of the classes. Tell me what yours are down in the comments below. And again, this isn't to like insult anybody if they like other weapons or if they want to use other weapons. I use a bunch of dumb stuff all the time <laughs> that's less than ideal. So, you know, whatever. 
Uh, thanks for watching this. If you enjoyed it, be sure that you get subscribed that we get notifications whenever I post these videos. Special thanks to all the members of the channel as well as the patrons over on Patreon. These are my supporters. If you'd like to be a part of that, there are links down in the description. You get early access to videos like this and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool. Bye.